before we go further into the debate and we open it up on the broadcast, let me first bring in Mr. Yusuf Tarigami, who's the leader of Jammu and Kashmir unit of the CPM, and he's also petitioner in this particular case, and he's joining me this evening. Mr. Tarigami, thank you so much for being a part of this conversation. I'd first like to begin by understanding what are the main arguments that you have presented before the Supreme Court as part of your plea. Our major concern has been and continues to be the assault on the constitutional rights of the people of Jammu, Kashmir and Ladakh. Mm -hmm. And we have prayed before the Supreme Court that whatever has been done on 5th, 6th August 2019 is not only contrary to the constitutional procedure, but constitutional spirit as well. Mm -hmm. It is virtually something which distorts the whole constitutional order mm. is a guide for the for our country, which we have achieved through a protracted struggle for independence, which we have been given after due deliberations in the Constituent Assembly of India. And that's what is has been assaulted, distorted. So that is uh, why uh, how we have approached the Honorable Supreme Court because there is no other remedy available for us. This is the opportunity yeah. which we as citizens have decided to avail of. Actually saying that the center's decision is violative of Article 3 of the Constitution to downgrade the state into union territories now, is that what your essential argument is? You see, the, our, our position is that, you know, the circumstances in which the country got divided and accession of Jammu and Kashmir took place mm. on 26th October 1947. Though ordinarily it should have happened on 15th August, but it did not till the tribals, raiders from across, invaded us here and finally the Maharaja who was the chief vice of Jammu and Kashmir at that point of time and authorized to accede to either of the domains. So uh, he was reluctant in 26 October till the invasion took place and he sought military intervention support from the Union government. And it is how the instrument of accession was signed by Maharaja and Jammu and Kashmir acceded to India. And it was, this is one part of it. And then the another part is, at that time, Constituent Assembly was in session and it started its deliberations after some time. And then uh, the constitutional uh, frame was being discussed for the whole of the country, including Jammu and Kashmir. And this was during those deliberations that Article 370 emerged, became part of the Constitution of India. Mm. And you know, uh, so our point of view is, it was not a danger at that time, rather inclusion of Article 370 with certain guarantees to the people of Jammu and Kashmir, certain assurances, certain promises, constitutional promises were made. And uh, it is in that context that the accession took place and was ratified. And uh, the uh, attempts from the other side of the border mm. were, were, were defeated. So my point is that you must understand, we must understand the context. Mm. And we must understand the validity of this article. Was it ever hurdle for our relationship with the Indian Union? Rather, it facilitated the relationship. Hmm. It was the, the uh, article of the Constitution of India hmm.
which was which which evolved itself through a discussion proper discussion hmm. in the constituent assembly of india itself so essentially mr tariga me what lo, i wanted to understand over the clutch of petitions that suggest that jammu and kashmir legislative assembly wasn't legally competent to give assent and consent to the presidential order what are your views on those petitions there are two things two issues hmm. are there first issue is now they are talking about that this is a temporary this was a temporary provision hmm. this was a temporary provision article part of the constitution of india and you look at it the whole whole clause whole article you will find out there are certain certain uh, provisions certain clauses mm -hmm. which suggest that president of india can through the order of the president this provision this article can be can be removed but only with the consent and approval of the constituent assembly of in jammu and kashmir right it's not the assembly of jammu and kashmir it is the constitutional mm. authority mm. of jammu and kashmir constituent assembly of jammu and kashmir you please open it up and read it out mm. and go through it Hmm. and then tell us why the violation has taken place that is why our opinion is that at one point when the constituent assembly was in session in jammu and kashmir that constituent assembly ratified the accession hmm. and we have claimed that now it is the final final verdict of the people of jammu and kashmir in favor of accession of jammu and kashmir with the union of india hmm. and on the other hand the same constituent assembly has not asked for revocation abrogation removal of article 370 mm -hmm. till it is conclusion so why was the necessity of that means what that means the precondition for removing the article 370 was approval or any 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 recommendation from the constituent assembly of jammu and kashmir that has not been done that means it has become permanent there is no authority not even the parliament of india which can remove the clause in absence of the constituent assembly of jammu and kashmir that's how the constitutional order stands All right. Thank you so much for sharing your views, Mr. Tarigami. Appreciate you joining us on the broadcast.